Just come to Pusa. We got ten groups sitting on the campfire or something. Mm. Well, maybe a little more intimate. Um, thank you for coming. And, and um, I want to introduce you to Percy Knight. Now, Percy um, has done many, many things. And if you're a sporting person, you might recognize this place. Um, Percy was involved in, in is a professional, what do you call it, professional rugby league? Uh, with two major clubs in Sydney. Yes. Yeah. 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 Canberra Raiders. Thank 
And welcome. Certainly was a name that used to keep me in a lot of trouble when I was to keep going up on an Aboriginal mission out in the central west of New South Wales. I'm a, a Wiradjuri man uh, from the great Wiradjuri nation. Um, I don't know. Back to the map, as you can see. Introduction. If it's going to be awkward for you, perhaps we could get to yeah. it. Uh, anyway, I'm from the, the Wiradjuri Nation, which is the largest cultural <coughs> in New South Wales, just west of the Blue Mountains. Probably from Katoomba, down as far as Hay to the west, and Lincoln to the South covers all the areas within regional central New South Wales um, towns like Lithgow, uh, Bathurst, Dorage, Parks, Forbes, the Dale, Dumbo. Uh, so, one big piece of country. Um, I've had a pretty interesting life. Um, so, I mean, are you first United football player? <laughs> and so, well, I was where I got up this morning. <laughs> I said, the name's the same, but the body's changed to two <laughs> So, So, so I've had a, a professional sporting career. I grew up in Kadama in the central west of New South Wales. And uh, the mission is controlled by missionaries. Um, they were good times for us as kids growing up, but they were a tough time for our parents. Um, and some of those, those times, I mean, we were kids uh, growing up just having fun. Uh, we went to a local mission school um, where I, I was a kind of a skinny kid when I was a, a young boy. Started to um, play in the schoolyard. And, uh, I was um, playing with some, uh, some bigger kids anyway. The end result of that, I ended up with uh, three breaks in my leg. Mm -hmm. I was only about 10 years of age then. Because we lived about nine, ten kilometres from the local town to the to, uh, from Kadaver and the local hospital. So um, my poor old mum and I come from a family of thirteen. So um, my poor old mum had to had, had no transport, we had no transport. So she had to wheel me up in my in my early in my 
and my early thoughts of my early days in, in on the mission was I remember this day when my mum used to wheel me up in a prayer with with my leg hanging over the, <laughs> this, this, this big cast of and, and the news that um, the doctor was saying to their mother that well he's got a very bad break, he, he may not be able to have full use of his leg. But he may he may walk with a limp for the rest of his life. And I'm thinking, hey, I'm, I'm listening to this shit, I don't have to hear this, you know, I don't want to hear it. Um, anyway, cut a long story short. About nine months or this bit full class or um I recovered. Um, this, what happened to me when I was in a race with him, we were bad boys on the mission, we were, we, were, uh, we were borrowing some fruit off the farmer next door on the other side of the mission, quits as they were. Anyway, he came out with his dogs one day, and this is when I, oh, about a couple of months after the class, and I was walking with the So we ran. And if you watch the Forrest Gump movie, yeah. you know when yes, yes. he was and he was running away from mm. these bullets, mm. <laughs> and all of a sudden he was running and <laughs> he's, he's uh, stents in there, and they they flew off, and he was, <laughs> hey, I'm 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 okay. But that's basically what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, therefore the local school teachers sort of thought, you know, well, this kid. Um, this, this kid's got some talent, so as all the other kids in this, because they took us into town to play rugby league with, uh, with the local, local kids. And I guess for me, that was a part of the assimilation and the integration that uh, we were, I was, you know, uh, the good Lord gave me talent. Um, wasn't, at the time, I didn't realise where that talent would, would take me. I was actually a great scholar at school. In fact, I spent more time in the principal's office <laughs> than, I, than I did in the classroom. Um, so I guess my sporting career sort of took off from, from there. Um, you know, I, I, had, I, had, I had talent and, uh, and, um, and I loved playing all sports. And I wasn't, um, yeah, I wasn't just good at it. At uh, rugby league, I was good at uh, playing AFL or VFL in those days. It was cool. We played rugby league on a Sunday and AFL on a Saturday. It was great fun, you know. So um, it wasn't until I was 17 and um, I moved to Canberra, worked for the, the late great Charles Perkins mm -hmm. as a mentor in the public service. Now, Charlie, Charlie was a great man. Charlie is perhaps one of our greatest leaders mm. uh, of recent times. Charlie, Charlie and I, and, and, and uh, uh, another guy called uh, Larry Coral and the Black Flash, uh, also played for Balmain. <coughs> yeah. um, we both worked for Charlie, and so Charlie took a liking to both of us because he was a sports person. <coughs> Charles led the Department of Aboriginal Affairs. He was the Assistant Secretary at the time. And he led the reforms for Indigenous Australia. Prior to his public service career, he led the freedom rights around Maury, mm -hmm. around, um, around um, Robert and those areas. And, and, he, and um, he led the, the freedom rights and, um, and he, he helped establish the 10th Embassy in, in Canberra. Uh, Unknown to a lot of people, but Charlie was beyond that. But he was he was a great leader of men. He also played professional soccer in England. Uh, Charles Perkins. Mm -hmm. He was also one of the first recipients of the kidney transplant, and eventually his kidneys failed on him some years later, and he was um, and he passed away. But he left them. Uh, a great legacy, and um, in fact, um, he used to head up the uh, National Aboriginal Sports Foundation that gave me the opportunity to go and play football in England uh, with a club called Witness. Mm -hmm. Now, I hadn't been on a plane until you know, um, when I was, when I was sort of, uh, before I went to Canberra, and 
Maybe I'm on a plane travelling about 22 hours over to, to Great Britain to, to England to play football. But I hadn't even been to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it was just marvellous how I had talent and the talent created pathways for me, you know. And, and I had the opportunity to use it. But I had people believing in me. Um, now, Charles Perkins used to love socialising, even though he wasn't a, 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 a drinker himself. But to get his staff together and, and on weekends and that, and go and play soccer. And, um, and um, we'd go and play cricket and so forth. And it, it created a great bond between us all. So we got on extremely well in, in, in the department of Aboriginal Affairs. Um, Charlie, Charlie was a, you know, an extremely great mentor. Um, so actually when I received an offer from, uh, from Balmain to come and play, play football, I went and saw Charlie and I said, this is not a, a, you know, these guys want to want me to come to see me play. Yeah, they want to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, but they're more interested in um, in me rather than in my friend Larry Corowa, because Larry was a lot thinner, and, and they, they didn't think that he was um, the the rigor of first grade football or, or rugby league. And I said, well, if Larry doesn't come, I don't come. So they, they said, oh, okay then. So Keith Gillan's in the negative of the, uh, the Belmont Leeds Club call and said, yeah, we'll take you, mate, too. <laughs> so Larry went on to we play for Australia, went on the King Reef tour and played State of Origin. And, you know, yeah. um, but prior to this, we, we played in a game uh, against Great Britain. Uh, at Seaford Oval in Queenie. Now, I I was sort of playing centre in those days. He was like a running player. Um, and in this game, Don Fuller, the coach, said, to him, "I want you to play five eight on this week because our our number one five eight is out injured." I said, "Mate, I haven't played five eight since I was at school, and you're putting me up against you know the, the best they got in Great Britain." So he said, oh, you're right. He said, you played like a fire mate anyway. You wouldn't send us. So anyway, it was okay. So cut a long story short, we demoralised Great Britain. We, we, we flogged them. <laughs> or we beat them by about 40 points. <laughs> Larry scored five tries. Five unbelievable mm. tries. So we, 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 we then went on to when El Nino and Cree started in Balmain. And we were you know, really successful in Balmain. At Belmain. Um, so we, you know, had no um, aspirations to do do anything but to play footy and then perhaps go into coaching. Or, but my journey's led me back to Canberra uh, when I finished playing for Belmain with the Canberra Raiders. Okay, I mean, even though I'm not from Canberra, a lot of my family you know, moved to Canberra for the purpose of work. Service uh, because the jobs were easy to get. I mean, in small country towns like Canberra, you, if you're a, an indigenous person or uh, if you come from a, another multicultural sort of society, you were given jobs. Um, you know, uh, not not so much, but your, your your nationality. So you worked on a railway, you worked on a local council, you you, you did. Our jobs like um, stick picking and uh, and um, bale and hay and stuff like that. Uh, so I thought I was out on, on, on the rail railway line. I was actually worked on the railway line at the age of seventy. I cheated to get on there, but you had to be a man. So the, the guys um, in in the, in the Canadian railway um, knew that I could play football and. Um, so they, I was 17 and nine months old, but I actually got on the railway. And, uh, so they kept 
sending me uh, letters requesting my birth certificate. <laughs> So anyway, the, the inspector was a, was, a, was a local Canadian guy. He sort of said, you want this guy will be 18. So he's a great broker and all that sort of thing. You know, he, he's a really good asset. And he'll go on to the bigger things in, in the rail industry. Um, anyway, he was only sort of telling those little white lies in order to keep me around so I could play football for the local town. Um, but I left Canada and went to, went to uh, Canberra. And, uh, and after after my football career, I went back to well, I started. I went back and played with the Cabaretas for about three years or two years. And at the age of twenty nine, I got a bit tired of it. I got a bit sick of the training, and and um, it, it, it got. Uh, and Canberra in those days were really really cold weather. Okay, you see for they were get breaking um, a bone in my instep, you know, because it wouldn't heal. So, so I remember saying to one of my mates who's actually played a bell named Gary Spears, and I said, can you look up? I'm going to give it away. So I can't be silly. He said, you know, you've got to say it again. I said, no, 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 no. So I remember driving across the Queen Bear Bridge, uh, right next to the, to the sea for they were right next to the, um, so right next to the Queen Elise Club, stopped my car on a rainy night. I got my bag out of the boot of the car um, and threw it in the Queen Bear River. Yes. Mm. So they kept putting me in the program and ringing me up. <laughs> and I said, you see that mobile phones in those days. Mm. And then, uh, so my mates uh, who played for Balmain, too, David Grant, uh, and I said, no, I said, look, just tell them I'll, I'll, I'll quit. So he gave him this message to you. Yeah, that's that's the way indigenous people used to um, used to communicate. So they have a message to you and, and so forth. So anyway, uh, so um, I, um, I I quit. Never played a game since then. I, I worked in the public service uh, again with, with other Charlie Perkins, and then. Um, then I worked in the Indigenous Employment Section, I worked on the Aboriginal Employment Development Program, and the Community um, Employment Program, and the, and the App Study Program. And, and so, so I started to help um, in creating forms for, for our people back in the, in the, in the 80s and, 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 and 90s. So I ended up working in the economic division of, uh, of, of ATSIC in those days, in the Aboriginal and, and um, Torres Strait Islander Commission. The ATSIC model of, um, of consultation and collaboration, it wasn't a bad model, but unfortunately it was, um, it was supposed to be a democratic mo uh, model which, which the commissioners were elected by the people. So you had the elected arm and you had the public service arm, the, the department that would administer the program. Unfortunately, the, the, the model was great. Poor. In fact, the, the, the elected, sorry, the, the, um, the administrative arm of ASIC were, were dictating to the elected arm and they were putting programs of um, programs and they are uh, putting forth economic programs so forth they were getting the elected arm to understand them. Now you've got an elected arm that would basically get people from indigenous communities from all over Australia. Um, so and their level of education and, and uh, their, their level of articulation and that are great and uh, you know they, they received travelling allowance and, and setting fees and they came to Canberra um, other than maybe two or three of them that were outspoken and, 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 and made a lot, they were they were overwhelmed by the bureaucratic arm of government, uh, and that's why um, ATSIC sort of had a um, ATSIC lasted for about six or seven years, and then they got rid of it because it wasn't doing the elected arm was saying. These people are supposed to be representing our interests in terms of indigenous economic empowerment. 
self-determination, you know, self-determination presupposes the rights of all people to control their own destiny. I said, but was it was a was a was a an entity that had had the right um, had, had the right terms of reference. I just weren't ready for it. They they, they had a you know. They, they were brought into the bureaucrat of, of Canberra in the, in the MLC tower and they, they were put on in front of them all these made by the elect, by the administrator. And at the end of the day, they were rubber stamped by the elected. So the administrator went back to the minister and said, well, no, he, he, he elected our, the commissioners. Actually endorsed all these. When, when you went and saw sort of, Confronted one of the or some of the commission said, "Why did you do that? So, do what? <laughs> so, why did you, you you endorse this paper? Do you know the ramifications of this?" So, I think I think that sort of led me to believe that look, you know, if if we're if we're going to be self determined, if we're going to be economic empowerment. And, and we're going to um, move into a direction um, where we're going to escape from, I um, forgot about the PowerPoint, so. <laughs> um, if we're going to escape from, from poverty and, and you know, if, we, if we're going to be self-determined, then we've got to create our own new beginning. Um, and this new beginning uh, was promised us back in the 1967 referendum. Now, one of the strong disablers of in Indigenous uh, business development is this thing called natural violence, which is orchestrated by Indigenous people themselves, and usually by a family group. And it's kind of like the tall poppy syndrome. So somebody sort of described it as a dark mater of, uh, of Indigenous business, you know, the, the uh, the bad force. Um, what did you call it? What was it the lateral violence, L A T R A L, lateral violence. Now, mm -hmm. the, the only, we talk about this amongst ourselves. Uh, however, the social justice uh, minister, or, uh, Mick Gooder, in his 2014 or 2011 social justice report, put it out in the main domain. Uh, so people start to talk about it as a strong decision for successful Indigenous So it, lateral violence is amongst Indigenous people themselves? That's right. It's perpetrated mm -hmm. by a family group and by people in the community that um, it's, it's, it's a tall poppy syndrome. It's, mm -hmm. it's jealousy, it's mm -hmm. innuendos and, and so forth. Competition and yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so natural violence. Now we talked about Garth I want to take I want to take you back to the uh, to the future, as far as Indigenous people are concerned, in terms of the post-colonisation, living occupation in Australia. Um, Indigenous Indigenous Australians, you know, we 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 have the others and gatherers economy. Our culture is is the is the oldest living culture in the world. Um, and um, so, so prior to Europe, our nations were strong, our language was strong, you know, and, and the great diversity of our mm -hmm. population uh, is that there are 300 languages mm -hmm. and there are 600 dialects. So um, people are saying that in your study, you want to create business, but how are you going to get one model fit all? I said, well, I'll get to that later. <laughs> um, so, you know, we, 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 we jumped into the DeLorean, we're going back to the 1967 referendum, which, which was meant to give us equality and parity within society. What happened? Okay. Mm -hmm. As a race of people, we weren't ready for We didn't quite understand mm -hmm. what the 67 referendum meant. I mean, I think. It was a yes, no, but I think 92% of the population voted yes. But in the sense we digress back, backwards and programs of retribution, programs of conditionality, programs of assimilation and integration 
were, were legalised, even though they were they were moving um, young uh, men and women and boys and girls away from our community well before that seven referendum. The government sort of legalised it. Really? Right? And, and and basically, when I say legalised it, they they kind of said now programs of assimilation and integration. And Condamon was one of the towns where where they moved us from the missions and into the local town. They said, well, you're going to go to 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 the white school, and you, you know this was a process of whiteness. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> So you're going to go to the school, and uh, you're going to come. You're going to, you know, forget about your culture, and and, and um, um, you, you're going to live like the white people live. Um, and one of the one of the the stolen generation is is basically one of the policies on that day, mm -hmm. uh, and that's a policy of retribution. Now. So before that, when you were growing up on the mission, you were with your parents. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we we we, we they moved we moved us from the mission, knocked our mm -hmm. little houses down, the mm -hmm. little school, and we're we we're, we're now going to the the the, the main school in town. Mm -hmm. We lived in Goobang Street and Gordon Street and Cunningham Street with other non-indigenous people. We, we were very we were very segregated and, and so forth. But the the stolen generation and my my mum was actually conceived in the Kudamana Girls Aid, uh, which was one of the institutions. Mm -hmm. Now, the sad thing about the Stone Generation, or there's many sad things, is that, um, is that um, it wasn't just men, young men and women. These were young boys and girls mm -hmm. that were taken away from their communities and put into you know, institutions and and so forth. But one of the sad things is that they said when you at the age of 18, when you're legally released from this institution, you cannot go back to your own community. You've got to you got to make a, a life somewhere else. Right? So they were programs of of conditionality, assimilation, integration. And it promised a new beginning for us as Indigenous Australians. 2008, get in the DeLorean and you come back to 2008. The apology, mm -hmm. Kevin Rudd, Prime Minister, uh, spoke about new beginning for all Australians, new beginning for India. We're sorry for all the, mm -hmm. the heartache. We're sorry for taking the children away. We're sorry, we're sorry. Uh, but we're promising a new beginning. This government, under my leadership, is going to create this new beginning. Now, I thought, I watched this thing today and I thought, wow, that's, that's very powerful. The 1967 referendum. And the quality and the parity within the site didn't work for us. So we kind of missed the vote. It's like that. The government of the day is promising a new life, a new beginning for Indigenous Australia. Well, let me tell you, it's now the second decade, the de decade of the new millennium. Nothing's happened. Um, the, the key, uh, and I'll get on to my research. Uh, I'll get on to my research. The, uh, like, Nothing's happened in what way? Sorry? Nothing's happened in what particular way? Well, um, in terms of the equality and, and parity within society, even though Indigenous Australians, um, I mean, even the constitutional um, is, um, is, is quite alarming when you consider that within our own constitution, which is based on the Westminster system of law, you know, the monarchy, uh, it describes Indigenous Australians as flora and fauna. Mm -hmm. That still exists, right? Still, 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 still there, still, still in, the, in the constitution. Mm -hmm. So we need to have this debate about this, this uh, constitutional acknowledgement of, of that. So, so we'll go from Indigenous Australians uh, Aboriginal Australian to First Australians. And although we support multiculturalism and we endorse multiculturalism in a big way, we're not part of multiculturalism. We're, we're, we're the first peoples in this country, we're the first Australians. Very similar to uh, people what's happened over in America, I mean, so in Canada with the First Nation people. But, but what that means, so if you're going to create a new beginning, 
if you're waiting for this gun, you, you, you know, it, will, it won't happen. So you've got to, you've got to create your own new beginning, right? You, you've got to stop worrying about what governments are going to do, what other people are. And the key to self-determined economic independence is to create an economic framework, um, an economic framework through business development, indigenous business development, and in indigenous community enterprise. Once we once we have this debate, if we have had this this uh, constitutional acknowledgement, uh, so that means that under the monarchy, it, that may never happen. But Australia needs to create a republican in order for that to to happen. Now I'm, I'm you know, this republican and, and monarchy uh, debate. I um, mean I don't want to get caught up in that either. But what's best for 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 our people? Is that under under republic we get to draw up our own constitution, mm. right? And the way that we want to live, the way Australians want to live, and how they want to live their life, not based on you know how I, the end of government, is appointed by the Queen, you know, the Governor General. Um, so, getting onto my research, and I thought, well, the key. And, and, and Rudd said this in 2008, so the key to economic development for is, is, is through the development of community and of own enterprise and social enterprises and, and small business. Um, if you want to create an economic framework for a new beginning, that's what, what we have to do. Um, so it, um, it's sort of... We got into a situation and said, well, our leaders, leaders of, 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 uh, of the day are kind of having <coughs> different conversations with governments, uh, but very, very, very little of that is filtering down to everyday Indigenous people. Um, so what we're saying is that you need to be more open in your conversations and in your consultations and so forth. Smart. They're very smart in multiculturalism. They're very smart in, in indigenous affairs, uh, and the fact they they like this divide and conquer. Mm. They divide us. They conquer mm. us. You know. Mm. So, so my thought is: look, what is the problem? Why why are we having um, a good crack at developing indigenous business? But what's going wrong? Well, why aren't we successful in it? I mean, Indigenous Australians are so far beyond an economic development empowerment than other Indigenous nations. So why are they so successful? And, and yet, yeah, well, <laughs> what did you say? They have casinos. Mm. But, you know, they, they, they live in a commercial world. Now, Indigenous Australian corporate objectives uh, and the way, way we do business, culture is really embedded in our business and, and our ideologies and our epistemology and our ontology and so forth. Um, so I said, well, the corporate objectives of Indigenous <coughs> business is very different to corporate objectives of mainstream business. So the, the, the real, in mainstream business, the, the nations of, of profits and, and uh, you know, the, the nation of of social capital and, and, and other governance and uh, compliance and leadership and, uh, and so forth. They're, they're important ingredients. But in the Indigenous world, they're not that important. They may be successful in their uh, worldview of our business, that they, they provide uh, support for their family groups. Now, they may not be making profits, they may actually operate on a, on a loss base. So they're, they're successful. But from an outsider looking in, saying, well, yeah, they're not successful. They're, they're uh, you know. So, <clears throat> so my, my view was to create a business pedagogy. All right, now, in pedagogy is a, an education term that looks at learning styles and teaching practice and, and, your, and your, your, your worldview about teaching ontology. Uh, so, I thought. The problem that our people have in business, which is so important, is the literacy side of business, right? Mm -hmm. 
And they struggle with that. Now, they'd rather go out and pay a CPA or a chartered accountant you know, $20,000, $30,000 that they don't have to do all their books, mm. you know, to, to, because they don't understand, you know, <coughs> if you see you as the side of it. So if we can in, in create a view that integrates an ancient culture into a business model, an hybrid business model, like, like have a literary numeracy as a pedagogy, the uh, practice model, um, would be the answer to our, our problem. But there are challenges, huge challenges, uh, that have involved basically the diversity of Indigenous, uh, um, in, in the way they prioritise business in their community. Um, I'm from the Rantry Nation. The Rantry Nation has a lot of major uh, Indigenous population in a, in a large geographical area. But let's say I live on the, the, the Rantry people are known as the people of the three rivers, that's the Macquarie, the Lachlan and the Murrumbidgee. Now, now, the people that live on the Murrumbidgee, Indigenous uh, Rantry people, the, the way they prioritise business is different from the people that live on the Lachlan River. So what's important, say, in a town like Cara, in a town like Falls, in a town like Enabling, uh, can be can be very different. Yeah, you know, what's important to them may not be may not be as important as in a in a community that are under kilometres apart. Values is Yeah. Yeah. Although we 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 have this in our society and in our system, but yeah, you know, the, the, the nation of, of spirit spirituality. Now, um, one of uh, normally when we 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 give talks of this nature, we we acknowledge the traditional owners of of, of the land. And now, I can acknowledge that I have the cultural, as part of the cultural protocol, I can acknowledge the category of people of the Eora nation, uh, uh, past and present. But as a rentry man, um, I can't give welcome to country mm. because we have different protocol in different, mm. different, different areas. Um, and uh, I kind of get a bit peeved off sometime when I'm at the university and they asked me to give, um, they've got a special ceremony on us, so and they asked me to give welcome to country. So, well, give an acknowledgement of the country, but I can't give welcome to country because that's, that's a cultural right on the category of people on the Eora Nation. But in terms of our spiritual belief, it's still very, very strong. I mean, we, we live. In, in a number of different diverse settings, we live in urban and rural, and uh, we, we in, in some parts of, of our of, of Australia, they, they still retain a semi-traditional lifetime and a traditional lifetime. So law is still very important. Law, as in L O R E, and as mm -hmm. as opposed to L A W. Mm -hmm. um, and in the Northern Territory, the Northern Territory government some years ago. Uh, acknowledge that law is a LORE, the LAW recognise LRE as mm. a as a part of the indigenous uh, decision maker in law. So you know one um, if somebody's in 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 uh, in the Northern Territory are uh, you know causing problems in the community, the elders of that community can mm. um, can can judge them and ban them from the community, or even at times speed them for what they they, they they may have done. So in that case, your cultural law L O R E yeah. assists the indigenous people with the white L A W. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in some in some research, but the white L A W have have these things uh, like the Westminster System of Law. They have these learning circles, mm. or these 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 circles that now. They try to assimilate the indigenous world view of things, but you're never going to do that. Um, Sorry, is that the real problem then? That that somehow uh, that's, we've that's got one this, of the real problems. Yeah, we've got there's a, a very diverse yeah. group of people. Because I'm just thinking, I have been really impressed by 
you know, like people like Stan Grant or, you know, yeah. they just stand way above the average Australian. Like we don't, I don't feel we produce such top quality individuals now, sometimes as I'm, much I'm, as, I'm, as the I'm the glad average. you mentioned Stan. Mm. Stan's, Stan's, Stan is, is a ranching man. He's, he's mm -hmm. related to me from the, the grants from Wonga and Griffith at Kandangla and, and so forth. Um, there's Stan Grant Senior who speaks fluent rantery. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, a, uh, that's Stan Grant Senior lives in the rancher. But the other Stan Grant, I think, uh, if, if I were to nominate a potential leader, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, another Tony Perkins, mm -hmm. it would be Stan. Mm -hmm. um, and, but, but Stan is still trying to sort of where he fits that's into right. things in terms of the cultural <laughs> hierarchy of Indigenous people. And someday, some someday, I hope it's not too long. Um, yeah, Noel Peters, uh, Noel Peterson kind of had regrets recently that he never went into politics. Mm -hmm. you know, and then he said, "I'm getting too old for that." You know, mm -hmm. well, yeah. So, so look, there are interesting things that that are involving. But you know, time waits for no man. Mm -hmm. You know, if if if. If you're going to create self determination uh, and self determination presuppose the rights of all people, mm -hmm. that's all people control their own destiny, right? Yeah. Um, but you've got to have the economic framework, you've got to have the structures and that all in place. So I, I think I think even though we had the stolen generation, we we have and we have a younger generation now that's coming through the system that knows how to play the game, mm. knows how to play the, the they're, they're so in, much assimilated and integrated, they haven't forgotten their culture. And so they're coming through, they're coming through in masses. So, mm. you know, um, I, I, I get a bit disappointed in our so-called leaders or self-appointed leaders where, you know, um, so well, when are you having this, this, this uh, dialogue on constitutional recognition. You know, it should have happened after 1967 or even before that. If we're going to rebuild our nation, uh, right, we, we need to come and say, you're first Australians, indigenous to this country. And, and I hope that my research that will provide a business pedagogy theory creates the framework for these younger kids that are coming through the system and say, well, this, this theory that Percy Knight proposes, jeez, uh, he was more than a football player, you know, <laughs> uh, you, know um, you know, a dumb football player, you know, he, he, he's got something here. So they'd be able to take that theory and there could be literally hundreds of coming through and looking at this theory and then say, we'll create the model. Mm. Hopefully, you know that when it's when when the good Lord decides that it's it's my time. But I'm looking down on this and say, like, "Wow, I made a contribution." I, I, you know, I, and and playing sports and and playing. I mean, they're, they're, and people you meet in life—they're just part of your journey through life. Mm. Um, and there'll come a time when um, when um, you know when you know we 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 we. we we leave this earth, we leave our earthly bodies and, and we you know we go into the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And um, but the spirit world of indigenous people is very strong. The smoking ceremonies and 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 funerals and that, you know. Um, we grieve uh, you know a lot longer than than I know people grieve in their own way, you know. But the indigenous people it's it's more a sense of um, it's it's grieving, but it's also a celebration at, at the same time. And the fact that holds our spirit together and strong is saying, okay. Um, and at the Radri Study Center, there's a great big eagle uh, that we we put up there, and it's made out of uh, um, uh, red timber or, or um, uh, the redwood from the Radri country, and it's like a big, and it sits on a scarred tree. Right, and the sky tree is the knowledge of that of that community. Right, it, 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 it's the knowledge book. It's, it, the mm -hmm. sky tree represents the knowledge, and and 
you know, learning is a life to death concept. You never stop learning. The, the great eagle, when we have funerals and we have sorry times, and, and that, we say now we're, 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 we're grieving, but we're saying goodbye because that eagle, um, that eagle um, designates that it's ready to go on the journey. So the eagle's like it's spread out, it's ready to fly. So that's, that's you know, the spirit of your, of the, of your, of, of your, your, your mother or your grandmother or your cousin or your auntie or your uncle or your brother or your sister and that. You know, they're in the better world now. You know, they're, they're, they're going off into the spirit world now. And, uh, so... Is it considered the best world? Well, well, we don't know when I go there. I'll, I'll take my mobile phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take my message stick. Don't know. I, I don't no, know. But, but my, my, my belief is that, you know, I mean, I, I grew up on Aboriginal mission and, and, um, and I was very much... Uh, and, and, and I was, uh, I was, I was embedded in Christianity mm. from a very young age. Mm. So, you know. But was that Christianity? Like, it sounded as if you were, did have quite a nice childhood. You were not separated from your family. Well, not until the age eleven. Yeah, but yeah. Um, no, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm not sure what I was going to say. But um, Ah, uh, yeah. Um, so, was it a mixture of Christianity? Like the mission was obviously going to give you Christianity, but were they also learning about your oh. understanding? And then that became a, a nice, interesting mix. Yeah, that, that is. But there is something more powerful than that. Mm. Uh, and, and although I can't explain it, I feel it. Mm. I feel there there is there is this powerful force. Uh, and our universe, and our universe beyond the universe, beyond the universe, it's infinity, you know. So th there has to be this, this, this incredible force that um, created everything that's, that's existing. Mm -hmm. You're not even by accident, nor are you by, I think, by design. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, you know, I remember, um, I remember um, we used to go to Sunday school, Every Sunday, because the uh, reason why I went to Sunday school is because um, we had to learn 13 memory verses in order to win a bike. <laughs> this, this was leading up into Christmas, you know, because at the time of Christmas in the mission, we'd get a gun and pouch, and the girls would get a doll. So the, the missionary said, If you learn these 13 memory verses and uh, Romans 3 23 for God and so on, the world that he gave his guns. I remember those from one my days as a kid. And you won your bike? Uh, oh. I did, I remember the memory verses. Oh. I don't remember all of them now, but mm. uh, and I know it's powerless but so the, the missionary song came. It was so, high, highly motivating. Where's my bike? <laughs> Didn't come. Yeah. So I sort of thought, oh, yeah, like, I'll be that. Yeah. You know. Anyway, so getting back to my research, I, I think it's it's very innovative. It's very revolutionary, and you know, it, it creates a, a, a it creates two worlds of business. It creates the indigenous world of business, their ontology, their epistemology, their pedagogy, and that indigenous Australians' learning styles and teaching practices are very different to non to, mm. to non indigenous people, and that was proven through the um, the National Aboriginal Trust Fund Pedagogy Project. They used to operate under the Common Schools Commission or the Curriculum Development Centre about 30, 40 years ago. So it's not new terminology, it's, it's been around for quite so a So people long. have actually known about it for oh, quite yeah. some time. Yeah. I'm just wondering, how, have and, you and, been able to promote this research well, well, of yours? Well, in, in my research, I'm actually going to use the, the standpoint theory, uh, the Indigenous standpoint theory, which mm -hmm. is very similar to the ground, the ground because you're in academia, kind of a standpoint theory, that's an Indigenous, I think, well, but why are you saying that? What is the look? Yeah, the standpoint theory that was created by uh, Dennis Foley, you know, it's like the grounded theory, but it's from our world of view. Mm -hmm. and, and the trouble, on the challenge that I have is trying to sort of uh, get academia to understand where I'm coming from, yeah. you know, from my world view, from, mm -hmm. from my culture, which is 70,000 year old culture, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm part of that. 
Um, and uh, so, <coughs> so it's challenging, uh, but I've always loved a challenge. Um, you know, how far into your PhD research are you? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm about to hand in my final assignment as was managed in the coursework. Mm -hmm. So you've got. You've, you've got research design, you've got qualitative, and then you've got quantitative. Mm -hmm. Now, as a quantitative person, I'm not very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I know basic maths and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But um, quantitative, uh, quantitative research, and most Indigenous people, 90% uh, of them are qualitative, narrative, storytelling people. Yeah. And this sure. is what I'm doing even tonight. I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, um, the quantitative is, I mean, it's hard for ordinary, like white people to do PhDs. It's a whole different yeah, mindset. It is. It's, it's a different very mindset. different, very hard. I also walked into uh, the uh, 7902 course session because I missed the first one to get a doctor's appointment in Canberra. So like, on Monday, it was two hours. Uh, lectures of two hours in there. And I walked in there and all these pie charts and. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> and these quantitative language, and honestly, my jaw nearly fell to the floor. It's like, you like a whole new language. You get some assistance with, with that? Well, you've got assistance, you know. Yeah. In, 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 but yeah. they, they just need to understand that there are some very powerful quantitative people mm. that can't be quantitative. No matter how hard they try. Yeah. And there are I, very yeah, strong qualitative that, people that can't be qualitative, right. but they can the uh, qualitative and, and quantitative reason. It, it's a learned thing, so you, mm -hmm. you learn enough to get through. Yeah, uh, but you never can say you, you're an expert on them. No. But you don't want to be. No. <laughs> no. So, so this, but this is the, the trials and tribulation of academia. Right? Mm. I may work in academia. And I may get the qualification to be called myself an academic, but I'll never be an academic mm. you know, because I'm, I, I, I don't think that way. I'm not that sort of a person. I'm an Indigenous Australian. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a narrative person. I mm. like to sit and have a yarn, yeah. you know, like mm. the, the notion of sitting around a campfire. That's what we used to do all the time, mm. you know. And in the days when there was no TV and that, you know, you would sit out in the front yard there and, mm. uh, and we'd, we'd make a fire and sit out the campfire there and, uh, you know, it'd be great. Then you look up in the stars and you try and make, you know, you look up there in the blue sky and the stars and you see all the different things in the, you know, in the, in the, in the universe and then, uh, and, you know, you see a star and your parents are saying that a star falling that, you know, that's that probably, Means that somebody has passed away or somebody is born. Yeah, that's, that's the universe. And, but you must get a lot of validation if you talk to people from a similar sort of culture, like the American Native Indians, or absolutely, a absolutely. They, they, and, and therefore, there's a validity yeah, on that level, isn't there? There's connection. There. Yeah, and, and I, I think. I think most in the most indigenous people have this connection. Right? Yeah. They may live in different worlds, mm. but they have the same thought process yeah. and, the, and the same ways of going about their, their business. Whether you whether you be part of multiculturalism or not, or uh, or you're part of one culture, it seems that the the, the culture that sits on on on, on the on the on the outer universe is is the, the the European culture sits out there, um, and Australia, the European one, doesn't really have that sort of um, cultural groups or understanding, or uh, you know, although I'm not saying all, but there are there are a lot of people that um, you know um, people in in, in in our politics. You know, uh, just really don't understand cultural diversity. Mm. Don't understand cultural competencies. And, mm, you know, that's right. and that's a problem. Mm. I think we're starting to learn a lot more about it now. Yes, we're starting yes. To listen. Because we're, yeah. we're we're doing what we're doing now. We're yeah. listening. Yeah, we're listening, and, mm. um, and 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 the more that we we talk to each other, the more that we embrace each other's culture, and we understand that. 
you know, the world would be a better, better place. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, there's some things that are going on in the world that, you know, we wish that, that you know, we, we all live as one, but unfortunately, uh, we don't. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, but, you know, we're only, in, in the big scheme of things, we're probably only one, one minute of time mm -hmm. in the whole production of life. Mm -hmm. so should we just open it up for questions sure. now? Um, you know, all those that have been saying that maybe. <laughs> You're very attentive. <laughs> I, I have a question. And um, in terms of your business studies now, which are, which are directed back towards your own indigenous culture. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure there's, you know, this is an assumption, I'm sure there's many things there that you feel that we need to learn to our business models. And I'm just wondering, you know, if, if you can sort of just bring out a few things that really we need to learn from you and, and, and in, in terms of the modelling that your culture does. We, we, our culture was, was even back to traditional life, it's more about caring and sharing. Mm. Um, and, that, and that's that's a real strong um, cultural trait to have. Uh, and and when when somebody in our community, when 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 when, they, <coughs> when somebody is born, we, we rejoice in that, we embrace it. A lot of families do somebody passes away and we grieve. Mm. Uh, in indigenous culture they and, and, and I guess Christians, well, that's not the end of the journey. And, I, and, and, uh, and a lot of our really old people, um, you know, they're, they're getting sort of well into their, 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 their life stage of their life. They say they're ready. Uh, and I say, well, what do you mean you're ready? What for? I say, well, we're ready. We're ready for that. And so if, you know, if I pass away tomorrow, then. Uh, I'm ready. Uh, and that preparation of saying, well, you know, the learning is a life to death concept is, is true. But how people seem to have a sixth sense, and particularly our really elderly people, but they won't. When you sort of say, well, you're really mum or you know, you're really dad, or what do you mean by that? Right? But you want them to tell them, hey, so, well, you know, I'm going away on a special journey. You know, my earthly body is no longer required. I'm now going on to my spiritual um, journey. And as Indigenous Australian, that, that is one thing that we, uh, we, we, we believe in. And we, when we come together to grieve or, or to, to celebrate a life, uh, we, we have this, this, this understanding, so well, I'll see you soon. Right? It's not as if we're well, gone now. Uh, and we're never going to see, but we have this belief that we will meet up one day. And it's very strong inside. So, you know, your earthly journey is now over. But, you know, your forever journey is your spiritual journey, and that goes on forever. It seems. And every star, I reckon there's a star up there for everybody. <laughs> It seems like the, the Indigenous people have a much greater readiness to talk about these things and also to make it a communal experience that you join together in your grief or in your joy. Whereas culture, it seems to be more, firstly, there's a death denying thing in our culture, and secondly, there's a privacy about grief that probably isn't helpful to us because um, one of the great strengths about a community is that they help each other, whereas we've yeah, we, sort of lost them. Yeah, you're right. But see, our culture is, goes back home. And our dream time stories and, and, and our ability, our, our song lines, and that. We, we all have stories. We all have song lines and, um, you know, these, these, mm -hmm. these spiritual sort of things. And if you ever watch a movie called Charlie's Country, um, David Cuffley is the main mm -hmm. star, and basically, he's saying, well, this is my country. 
I'm a traditional owner of it. But, you know, I live in a, in a hut with a thing and what I call is anything I can put together to make a, a, a like a house or something. Uh, I don't have a car. Mm. Uh, I don't have land rights. I don't have this. And they, they say it's my country. So it's, it's, it's a great show and it's really deep. Deep and uh, it's called Charlie's Country. It's a, you know, and they get it talks about the Grand Culture and, and all that sort of thing. Is it thing. meant to be a type of documentary? Or? No, it's a movie. Actually. It's an actual movie. But it's a great storyline mm. behind it. And, and, uh, of course, Dave Gulpley is one of mm, the great Tony yeah. Sanders is in that movie, Australia. Mm. Uh, and, and some oh, of yeah. that parts of that movie where he's standing on the, you know, spiritually and he's. He's communicating with his grandson, uh, and, uh, and you know that's that. Mm. that I think that's really well captured too. You know, mm. And how had him to explain it to a different audience? And, and, you, know, you look for me, mate. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anyone. You're not a Balmain fan, are you? Or? Roosters. <laughs> Why not play against you? Yeah. So. So you know, I mean, it, it's it's a uh, it's amazing world that we 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 live in, uh, but we've got to be a lot more respectful of each other's culture and mm -hmm. what that means to us yeah. as human beings. Yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. I'm making efforts to maintain this uh, um, culture, spiritual and uh, more culture of uh, originals, or they're making efforts to. Result and propagate. Well, that, that's why we still have um, semi traditional and traditional. We're still trying to hang on to that. Mm -hmm. But the process of assimilation and integration is just, it's, you know, uh, um, you know, it's. Uh, oh, it's nice. it, it is, yeah, exactly. And, and, and it's, it's a fear, you know, uh, that, that we have that they yeah. But it's an interesting thing because modern technology mm. has taken over whatever cultural things we used to value, say, 20, 30 years yeah. ago, you know? It's sort of everyone's getting swamped by modern... The value science. system of indigenous people are very, mm. very powerful, mm -hmm. um, but, but not in the, in the, in the, in the sense that it's, it's been interpreted by mm. so the European people. Mm. Uh, it's a lot deeper than that. Mm. Dream here, all these dream time stories, and uh, and they know the, the song lines and so forth, and they're, they're all linked to the, the, the spiritual world. Mm. Uh, and then they're, they're, they're um, sort of modern age indigenous people that kind of um, reflecting in another world. And so, what they put down on in artwork and then Mm. Cave paintings and so forth is their way of telling that story of, of what they're experiencing spiritually. Mm. Yeah. So, instead of uh, assimilation, you say that assimilation. Mm. And instead of that, they could have their own distinct uh, scene. Keep your discreet culture, which is I think better than the modern culture, modern way of life. They have better life and they can yeah, show you're, you're they can show the better world. You're, you're absolutely right. Which I think they're better. Yeah. They're morally better yeah. they're, and their life is better than the modern life, which is uh, very much uh, uh, say degrading. Yeah. Probably it's on reconciliation. I think I've got that all wrong, you know. I mean and who were trying to reconcile this is the whites with the blacks or the blacks with the whites? You know, it's not about holding hands and looking across the uh, it's True reconciliation means that you, to you, you tolerate one's culture, you understand one's culture, um, you understand one's teaching, you understand, um, you know, spiritual beliefs and so forth. Still, still, um, um, still having this sort of negative view about people and, and their culture and so we should embrace all that and say so, well this is what we are as a race of people instead of trying to you know um, 
change the world to be a dominant power mm -hmm. is wrong. Mm -hmm. I think as a, as a race of people. Yeah. But surely it comes from both sides. Um, in terms of, you know, from, say, the Western approach to indigenous people, there needs to be the honouring and the respect. But also in the indigenous community, it needs to call back on its its own respect and stand tall in that. And you know, it's like that becomes then a powerful force yeah. that it, it's very hard to dishonor. You know, I talk about natural violence. Mm, yeah. Now that's that's a, that's that was never in, in our culture. This this culture of sharing and caring, kind of mm. kind of an hypocritical term, you know, like, well, we're sharing and caring, but yet you have a, you have a, some of the members of the community with the long sort of family group kind of um, want to drag the community down uh, in some respect. And uh, so, um, in this nation of sharing and caring, I said, well, what happened to that? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. people are so similar and they integrate into, into into a world of greed and, 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 and the world around them. Um, so, well, that, that was never, you know, you go back 40, 50 years ago and indigenous people that were struggling at the time, it's like, bitch, we got each other. Mm. You know, we've mm. got each other, and that was the powerful element in which kept us as a race of people. I mean, we're only, we're only 2.5 or 7% of the yeah. You know, but okay. we're still there as a race of people because of reminded what our culture is and, and the sharing and caring of that, our spiritual knowledge. Um, and um, you know, um, I think as a, as a um, as a generation of of, of people that come into the world with different identities and different sort of world views and so forth and so maybe if we, we learn um, to be more responsive to other people's attitudes and world views and not trying to understand that before degrading it you know, mm -hmm. uh, I think we can have a better world yeah. I think you yeah. should yeah. be the but uh, we have many distinct uh, patterns which can lead where the life which is uh, a better life. The life is, um, as a matter of fact, the, the, the other idea is going degrading themselves. But I think uh, the religious culture is much better than, see, the present culture. So they should lead them to have better life. Uh, up until now. They should discriminate and get, ensure them to lead them to be better life. You know, in the early colonization days, I mean, they don't have people with massacres. Mm -hmm. I think that's virtually they're better than the, so the, 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 what we're saying. The other, we've other survived one, that. Yeah. We're, we're better it's people. Amazing. You know, yeah. We survived the massacres and that. We've lost books and stories of, of massacres. And, mm -hmm. You know, the great Winger died, who was the great Wiratri warrior. And, I mean, came in, uh, in great. Um, you know, in, in our world view, that he was the uh, protector of our people. Now he, he grew up around uh, oh, his tribes were led around the Bassist, uh, Orange area, and this go uh, those plainy sort of area. Anyway, in the early and when when Europeans tried to um, settle this, uh, the west side of the Blue Mountain, which was winterized country. Um, he tried to befriend the early settlers and, and you know, um, but what had happened is that the, the convicts in the early settlement and the soldiers started to interfere with the women and children of the tribe. So he took a stand against that and he mm -hmm. said, well, I'm going to protect my people. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and, and, and at this, this sort of study centre that I built, I think even Winterdine, there's a statue of Winterdine at the front. Oh, sorry. Um, 
Yeah, okay. Or at least he's, 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 he's out of the picture anyway. Um, so I used to call him Saturday because they, they, they didn't, couldn't pronounce his name or they didn't know his name. So Winter Dine. And anyway, they ended up capturing Winter Dine. Um, they beheaded him and sent his head to, back to, to, uh, to England mm. to prove that they they got they 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 killed this uh, this, this this troublemaker, you know, and Winterdine's body, the rest of his body, is buried out in Bathurst in a in a in a remote well, not remote in a on on a property um, that we keep very sort of secret. Um, so you know, I mean, very sacred ground. Um, can you write his name? Windradine. Windradine. Yeah, you can Google his name. W I. Yeah, Windradine. W Y N. Y N. Yeah, Windradine. Mm -hmm. Windradine. <coughs> I think. Yeah, Windradine. Windradine. Mine. Windradine. Windradine. Yeah. Anyway, you can Google him on that. Uh, mm. There's some great stories about him. Uh, you know, he was a striking. Indigenous man and uh, very strong and athletic, and uh, but he uh, played war on the on the first um, on the first settlers outside of the Blue Mountains when when the, the convicts and uh, the soldiers started interfering with the women and children on the of the mm -hmm. tribe. Other than that, he, he was quite you know he said um, he was quite because had they hadn't seen. He hadn't seen all like that before, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and uh, they thought, well, it'd be country big enough for, mm -hmm. I don't know when he thought that, but mm -hmm. you know, he thought, well, that's okay. Uh, so Winterdine, Winterdine, um, they, they actually beheaded him and, and sent his, his head um, back to England, which would have taken about six months or yeah. seven months or 12 yeah. months or back in those days. Mm -hmm. uh, so, this is proof that we've been we um, we 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 caught the um, you know the black so and so uh, the troublemaker uh, so, uh, you know and 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 I guess um, when you when you lose the leader of your tribe it's such go, a savage way it is such a it, such a and, and they're held in such high respect mm -hmm. um, you know they have scars on their body to denote. The importance of who they are in that in that um, you know in that cultural setting. Um, so one um, get a chance to go out to come down from Winter Island actually sits as a skull as a uh, out the front in that. Nobody really knows what he looked like, but we 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 got some um, some images from his actually family group who actually still live in Bathurst. And, um, and this study centre, what, yeah, what do you do with well, this? This, this is the Rangery Study Centre. Now, this is built, in one of the building. It, this is actually called a, 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 a epistemology uh, learning centre, all right? So it's based on, the, on learning circles. Oh, okay. And we wanted something, Cadavid sits on a, on a um, on a clay base, mm -hmm. right? At the moment, it's floating down there mm -hmm. and on the lava. Um, and in that clay base is natural ochres, mm -hmm. right? Natural red ochre in the clay. Mm -hmm. So we got the clay, uh, we got the earth from 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 site down there. We made compressed earth blocks. Oh, from, great! Right. So this these are blocks. They're actually about eighty kilo blocks, mm -hmm. and um, so they're actually give you that red. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the yeah. center, the center is facing east to west. So, west, the, the sun rises in the east. So, the sun comes through the uh, through the, through, um, through the east there. And maybe you can see so you can see too. the scarred tree there and the eagle that I talked about. Mm -hmm. But the the doors and the, the doors. And the um, and the furniture they were all made out of uh, river red gum, mm. beautiful river red gum. Okay, so we made them ourselves. We made the blocks, 
we wanted something to conserve energy, okay? Mm -hmm. So we wanted a culturally appropriate sort of building. Mm. You can see that rail line there behind oh, it. Yeah. That goes to Perth. Uh -huh. well, that's the main, yeah. and the main, I've actually worked on that track. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, in all these windows and curtains, and we've got murals and that, it's, 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 it's that's beautiful. It's like it's actually, mm -hmm. actually was opened by Kevin Rudd in 2011. Mm -hmm. We all want to do that. Yeah. And it's, it's great, it has a great feeling too, that it's got these internal verandas, mm -hmm. got archways there, Right. And usually the wind, when the wind uh, usually sort of blows from the, the west out that way, uh, and so it, it sort of makes this whistling noise and that. But that, what's interesting is you've you've got all those original features, which are part of your culture, but it's actually a very space age looking yeah. object, well, isn't and, it? And actually, when <laughs> we were building, I was telling people, said, "Well, it's a spaceship." Yeah. Um, yeah. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Time over here, you know, and we're going to go away. I've got to leave this one. Yeah. But anyway, it is. And we have curtains that's made out of um, artwork that our artists actually painted. Um, it's got a great big um, round table. And there I call it the, um, the night of the round table. Um, and um, Thursday night. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, could you just remind us where, where this is? It's in the, in the central west of New South Wales. Condoglin? 60 kilometres, uh, sorry, 100 kilometres from uh, west of per, uh, Parks. 100 kilometres west of Parks. Yeah, so just get on the, uh, the M4, mm -hmm. get over the over the blue mountains, mm -hmm. and just keep get on the yellow oh, big road. Good. Okay. This is on the web as well. This, this oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you said that you want to show something on it or? Sorry. Um, Do you have that? Yeah, yeah, just, right. Why don't we just mm -hmm. do that? Oh, yeah, Can I take this off now? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's yes. time to finish anyway. <laughs> we'll enjoy watching the... Yeah. So we built it. I built this in, in condo actually. I actually decided on the back of a tab ticket. Oh. <laughs> in Dublin. Mm. That's Stan Grant Senior. He, he, oh, he, really? He gave a welcome in age. Yeah. That's young Stan Grant Senior. We had a great big crowd there, and then we had the kids. And Mm. Mr. Rowe himself. Mm. This is when he was the foreign affairs minister. Yeah. Mm. Now, the reason why we got him is because of the Kudamundra girls are just mm. up the road with the mm. apology. Mm. What to say about the Red Days on this? Oh, yeah. This is worthwhile for a moment just to reflect on where we all come from and why we're here. This has been a long, long journey for the Aboriginal people of this last land. Just pinch yourself for a bit. Those of you who are white fellows like me, just pinch yourself for a bit. We have this enormous privilege to share this continent with the almost continuing culture in human history. And so, as I listen to Aboriginal elders in the lead up to the apology in early 2008, for the first time in my life, I sat down and I shut up and I listened. And I listened. And I listened. And I heard the stories, very personal stories, moving stories, stories of great sadness, stories also of enormous resilience and determination. Because if I was determined at one thing about an apology, it was to make the heart of this nation a new again. A new beginning again. That is, how do you close the gap in employment, and education, and in health, and in housing, and in opportunity, and in life expectancy between Aboriginal and non Aboriginal Australians? That is the test of whether we're fitting or not. Not whether I get a new speech or not. The test is whether 
we make that difference real for these young people sitting here. Sorry, sorry, when you hear me Created um, a language hub there and we created business. We owned a, we owned a, a transport business and a furniture store in the main street. And uh, you know, we, uh, we created um, some other sort of <coughs> social enterprises and uh, created a green waste um, removal service with the local council. So we we created um, sustainable sort of projects. I mean, this is this is from a town of population of three. Mm. Okay. So, but it also it reminded us that our culture is rich. Our, our mm. culture, is, culture is real. So it's important to get our young people mm. to understand that culture is, is very important. Um, and that. Guy that you heard the music from, that's John Markle. Even though I used to live next door to each other, the mission, they, they call him the spirit and beautiful. Uh, John Huckle is his name again. Probably Google. Blood What's his name again? John Huckle, H U C K L E. Mm -hmm. The spirit man. Actually, got a CD. H U C K L E. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. H U C K L E. Yeah, Johnny Huckle, mm -hmm. spirit man. He, he actually grew up next door to me, and uh, he also um, he, he grew up with um, some uh, Dilmation sort of uh, chalky bones and stuff. I remember, uh, you know, he used, to, he used to pull over and break his arm and, and stuff. But, and he learned music. He learned mm -hmm. a few back in my time. You understand? You remember the phantom books, mm -hmm. like the phantom. Along the back, they used to have this music page. You know? Oh, yeah. So he you learned know, his music all day. <laughs> you know? yeah. so, I mean, we were resilient sort of uh, people. In, uh, and, and this is one of the most proudest uh, things that I've, I've ever done, I, I think, you know, mm. because the, 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 the compressed earthquakes represent. Uh, the, the, the land and, and mm. you know it represents when we when we die we we, we get returned to Mother Earth. It mm. represents Mother Earth. Okay. Um, so and then the the the, the um, and all the outside you can't see it on this photograph but it, is, it has nice vegetation and, mm -hmm. and so forth. And got some emus and kangaroos out there. Mm. Let's see, we have to, we have um, a curfew in this place, so um, we have to sort of quickly bring it to a close, but I, I do want to thank you very much for mm. sharing with us such a rich history, and I know there's very much more that we haven't been able to touch on, and you did mention that fabulous main uh, title that you have for your uh, doctoral studies and the failure of da 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 da. The, 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 um, yeah, the successful is actually on the... Yeah, the fly. Oh, right. so yes, yeah. Successful, uh, successful is successful failures, which is... Okay, do you want to leave us just in one minute before we, we wrap up, perhaps just at the front, just we'll have a lovely silence with you. Sure. Thank you.
Thank you.